Hey, what's going on folks? Fire Pack Master Dog Training. I'm back. Um, the last video went very, very long, but I was emailed a bunch of questions that I didn't get a chance to answer because the questions were coming in late. But three of the most popular questions. Using the e-collar to deal with dog aggression, whether it's dog on dog or human aggressive dogs. Using the e-collar with fearful dogs and act of God corrections what my take is on active God corrections. So let's just stick to those three questions, those three topics, and see if we can move through it where it doesn't take too long, okay? Let's talk about active God corrections, okay? Um, for those of you that don't know what that means, that means using the e-collar at extremely high levels to stop an unwanted behavior in its tracks, all right? I wrote a chapter in my book about active God corrections, and uh, I haven't read it in a long time, so I'd have to reread it to see see exactly what it says. But I kind of wish I didn't, or at least I wish I would have expanded and spent more time explaining it. Because here's the thing: I never want anyone to think that this is something that happens frequently. Let's put it this way: with all the dogs I've trained over all the years that I've trained. I have had to use that method two or three times in my life, okay? Dealing with a lot of really bad dogs. It's not something that needs to be done. Now, I know there's a lot of people that go to it very quickly. I'm not a big fan. I'm just not a big fan. But again, that's me. This is what I do. This is my take on it. Um, and it actually took a, a, a buddy of mine that, that I respect that point that out a while back he, he wasn't happy with what I wrote in the book because he thinks that a lot of people were going to take it the wrong way and, and take it upon themselves to use that. And he's right. He is definitely right. So I want to make that very clear. And um, you guys, I've talked about the specific cases where I have used it. And I think, again, there's a chapter in the book about Jesse, the dog that was living out on the street. That was one case. But like I said, guys, two or three times with all the dogs I've dealt with, it's something that very rarely needs to be done, okay? If it's a matter of life and death, if it's something that's going to save the dog's life and everything else has been done before that and you wind up going to that place where that needs to be done, then that's one thing. But that's a rarity and most people should not attempt that or do that. Plain and simple, okay? So... I hope that clears that up. It's not something that I do often. It's something that I actually hardly ever do. Two or three times in my lifetime, okay? And that was with, for real specific reasons. And you guys have either seen it or heard me talk about specific cases when that was done. So let's move away from that. Just to make that clear, don't go that route, guys. Very rarely do you have to, okay? Let's talk about using the e-collar on aggressive dogs, whether it be dog aggressive dogs or human aggressive dogs. I spoke about this, I've written about it, I've made videos with these types of dogs. Um, there's a misconception and there's one video that, that really pops into mind. I don't use the e-collar to stop, punish, or correct aggression, whether it be dog aggression or human aggression, especially up front in the training. Let me explain a little further. So up until not that long ago, my most watched video and the video that I'd get the most questions about was Keezy, the, the human aggressive pit bull mix. Again, there's a chapter about him in my book and I broke down exactly what I did, especially with the e-collar usage. So I used to get a ton of questions on that video, and I still do now and then, because people see me working with that dog, which by the way, that was the last time I worked hands-on physical with a human aggressive dog. That was the dog that made me change, okay, to where now I do everything with the hands-off method, where it's just a lot less conflict. But what you saw was a extremely human aggressive dog that he was on death row. He was going to be put down. That was it. When you see me in the video with that dog, we did three private lessons with that dog to completely turn that dog around. But people see me using an e-collar. So there used to be people that would comment like it was hidden, like I was doing some kind of trickery or trying to fool people. And so right away, everyone thinks that when the dog blows up or demonstrates the aggression, 
That's where I'm nailing them with the e-collar, the punish the credit. Couldn't be further from the truth. Not even close, okay? Not even close. The e-collar was never used to address the aggression at all. Not one single time, all right? I'll tell you exactly how I used it in that case, and that kind of transfers to a lot of the human aggressive or dog aggression cases. So when I got there to work with that dog, I couldn't do the normal things that I normally do, okay? I couldn't do it, okay? There was no conditioning the dog to the e-collar normally. There was no using rewards. There was, there was none of that, all right? There, there was, I couldn't do that. I had to change things up. You know, that dog wanted to get me. Even though most of that was, was fear-based deep down inside, it doesn't matter. It's still aggression, and that dog still would have killed me if he had a chance, so when you see me take the remote from that dog and start utilizing the e-collar, that dog didn't want to come near me, okay? If he had to come near me or if I was to go near him, that's where he would attack, okay? He wanted to avoid that at all costs. Very simple. That's what, that was that dog's biggest stressor, me closing the distance or him closing the distance to me. Didn't want that. So how I utilize the e-collar there, still on the dog's lowest level that he perceived, and it was a pretty low level if I remember correctly, even though he was jacked up. What I did was use it to bring the dog to me, okay? So for example, I pressed down the continuous button and went light leash pressure, I bring the dog to me. Now, what that does is this dog doesn't know what that stimulation is, that sensation, that completely foreign feeling, right? It creates a lot of confusion. Well, here the confusion is very beneficial for me. It's very beneficial for the dog because for the first time when the dog felt that strange sensation, the confusion sets in and he's got to stop and he doesn't know what's going on. That changes the mindset to wondering what's taking place and it takes it off of wanting to attack me. Okay, very, very beneficial, very beneficial. The confusion is a big tool for me there. All right, hold on one sec. Luca, what are you doing? Leave it alone. Sorry about that. Luca found something he wants to play with. Hey, get down, get down, enough. We're not filming you, okay? He'll get back up and start walking around. He sees the camera going. He's, he really thinks it's, we're going to be doing something. So you see him getting worked up. Okay, so back to Keezy. All right. That confusion is a very beneficial tool at that point to me. Because as soon as that confusion sets in, everything else stops. That urge to want to hurt me, that belief that where he thinks he has to hurt me to be safe goes away. And he doesn't know what to do. Okay. So that's the first thing that happens. The confusion sets in. As I bring him closer with the leash pressure, with the e-collar going, the second he starts coming my way, almost like we do condition the dogs, right? The e-collar turns off. It's the first good thing that happens. Again, he's not knowing what's going on. And as he gets next to me, nothing bad happens. That's another good thing. Another positive that happens. Now the dog's standing there extremely confused but he's not trying to hurt me because he's thinking the mind is working. The mind is starting to change. All right. So we would reset that. And every time the dog was away from me, that's how I would do it. Never punished or address that aggression with the e-collar. Not one time. So again, the dog's at the end of the lead. I want him closer. That's what he doesn't want. There's no praise. There's no food. There's no treats, nothing. Okay. Just confusion and leash communication. The leash is my translator, always. So the continuous button got pressed. He locks up. I start helping him with the leash to come towards me. The e-collar turns off and everything stops. Nothing bad happens. That's how we start moving forward. Very, very important, very effective. Now, the other thing that you guys saw in that video is as I'm walking down the street with him, I would turn and go the other way and just tap, tap, letting him know, just follow me. That's all I need right here. That is it. So with that dog, and this is very common with a lot of those dogs that I worked with, same thing. I've never addressed the aggression or punished the, the aggression, especially up front, okay? 
So with that dog, that was the first time I ever told a client, I don't know if I can do it. That's what I told him because he was pretty far gone. He really was. And at that time, I used to go to the people's home and I only did three private lessons. And I told him, I don't know if I can do it. I'll give you everything I have and I'll do it for as long as I have to. Well, what happened was in that third lesson, that's the clip where you see Bruno with me. That's the first time I brought Bruno to help me. And there was a lot of reasons why I needed him there. For one, it just made me feel more comfortable. And, um, you know, that third lesson is when we pop that muzzle off for the first time. And then you see him at that group class. So what you're seeing now is not only a dog that is not trying to hurt me or anyone else, you saw a dog that was actually relaxed and happy and stress-free and interacting with a large group of people and dogs. And that's what I talk about changing the mindset. So there's going to be tons of people that disagree with me here, and I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. But you cannot punish aggression out of a dog. I don't care what anyone says. Now, there's going to be several people that say that's, that's bullshit. You know, or they're going to start talking about the definition of punishment. I don't care about definitions. I care about results. I don't care about immediate results. I care about long-term results. So these aggression cases that I'm dealing with, I can't think of any. And I'm even talking about dog-on-dog aggression within the same home. A lot of these dogs you have seen. I can't think of one instance where I use the e-collar to punish or correct aggression. Not one. I may have. If so, I can't remember. And if I did, it definitely wasn't on the front end. But most likely, I did not. But I never want to say never. I've trained a lot of dogs over the years. But I could tell you this. The most difficult cases, the dog-on-dog aggression within the same home, not one time have I ever had to punish or correct the aggression. Because here's the thing, guys. In those cases... If I'm going to get real, true, everlasting results, I can't allow that aggression to even come out. I have to change it, and I have to change the owners to where they understand how to continue it. It's very, very difficult, very difficult, but I've been extremely successful with it. Now, with that being said, when the dogs are trained, okay, and everything's going well, if six weeks down the road, if six months down the road, you're out with your dog or your dog starts to look funny and you start to see that old look back, at that time, correcting that thought of that old behavior is very effective. And there's nothing wrong with that. The dog is trained at this point. They understand the e-collar. There's no issues there, okay? Very, very effective. And you'll see the dog snap out of it very way, uh, very quickly. But if you want to utilize the tool to the best of its ability... And, and like I said, there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with this. And I know which ones are going to disagree with it. But the truth is, you're not seeing dogs with a lot of trainers two, three years down the road that had the, these issues. You're not, you're not seeing where they're at now. I've showed you a bunch of mine. Not because I seek them out, but because these clients send me videos. They send me stuff of their dogs interacting and no more problems. I can't do that on my own. I'm a small part of that. The e-collar is a small part of that. That takes educating the owners and it takes insane commitment from them. It takes a very strong level of education. But at no time am I using the e-collar to address that stuff. And if you do, you're going to fail. That's all there is to it. And this is why I say this. I'm not just, I'm just not assuming this. I get dogs, and I've been getting dogs for years that have been through other programs for aggression cases, and it's very short-lived because what is done, and a lot of local people here, I can't tell you some of the stuff I've seen and heard and and, and that these dogs have been through. You know, a lot of people, if the dog has aggression issues, whether it be with other dogs or, or people, they set the dog up, they let the aggression come out, and then they fry him with the e collar. It's never gonna work. It does not work. I guarantee it. I promise you, it does not work. It might stop it temporarily, very temporarily. The only way you change that forever is to change the mindset, okay? 
And you can't punish a behavior out of the dog when they have no control over it. You know, it's something that's in them deeply that is so strong, you have to change it. So if I would have taken Keezy and the second he blew up at me, I would have nailed him. He would be dead a long time ago. But he, he wasn't. He wound up going to daycare and being a normal dog. That effective. You guys have seen some of the dogs, that, like I said, the, the infighting within the home. You've seen them. I've, done the, I've shown the dogs. The owners have showed me follow-up videos. But there's still people who don't believe it. And this is the question I ask. People want to talk about definitions. What punishment is. If you stop a behavior, well, that's punish. Listen, I'm not into that. I don't care about terms. I don't care about quadrants. I don't care about definitions. I don't care. I care about results. And I care about teaching clients how to continue it. It's very important. Okay, very, very important. But I asked somebody this question one day who's real big on punishment, you know. You know, good trainer too, but that's all they want to do is talk about punishment. I said, what do you call it when punishment doesn't work? What does it become? They didn't have an answer. They said, well, isn't that just straight up abuse? They said, well, no. <laughs> well, what does punishment become when it doesn't stop the behavior? They said, eventually it's going to stop, but it always doesn't. So what does that become? It becomes abuse. So you got to be very careful, guys. Too many people jumping in to use the e-collar to punish and correct bad behaviors without having that foundation laid, plain and simple, all right? So I hope that kind of clears that up of how I do with aggression cases. Um, fearful dogs, my favorite kind of dog to work with. By far, I love working with fearful dogs. I try to film a lot of them because I think it's so important. You know, I think it's so important. And for me, it's by far the most gratifying kind of dog to work with. Um, I remember years ago when I started, you know, dealing with more and more people around the Nashville area and training dogs. And, you know, I'd show up at a home to deal with a really scared dog, a fearful dog, and I would take the e-collar out. And, you know, back then, guys, I had to explain to a lot of people what the e-collar was and how it's used. And people, well, isn't that a shock collar? I've been through all that. You know, I used to do that. I used to have to justify it. I'm so grateful that I don't have to do that anymore. People that come to me, they're not mandated to use an e-collar, but yet 100% of my clients do. Nobody has to. No one has to use an e-collar for, for my training programs, but 100% of them do. You know, And like I said, back then I used to have to justify it, but when I would take out an e-collar to work with their fearful dog, people used to freak. You know, Are you out of your mind? You're going to put that on my dog and say, yeah. Back then, I never had an answer of why it was so effective on fearful dogs. And I may not have the answer now. I just speculate. You know, I just guess what it is. But if there's one kind of dog that it does the most for, it is those fearful dogs. It, it really is. I'll give you another example. Years ago, uh, Bruno was young. Me and Bruno were down in Nashville. And, and uh, I was doing a demonstration. I used to do free in-home demos. I've done that all, you know. And I go, Bruno's out in the car, and I'm inside, and I go to check out this dog. And these people, I think they had three dogs, but the dog they called me for was by far the most fearful dog I had ever seen in my life. I mean, by far. It lived in fear of everything 24 hours a day. It hid under the table. It would shake and tremble. It was scared of anything it heard. And to go outside, the people would have to put it on a leash, just get it out the back door far enough for it to go to the bathroom. It would go to the bathroom fast and run right back in the house. It was pretty bad. It really was. So after doing the evaluation, I said, okay, let's, let's go outside. And they were like, well, we can't take this dog out. Well, so we're going to go outside. Don't you worry. I basically had him drag the dog outside. And that dog did put on the brakes, you know. And at one point, he tried hiding under a car. And so we take the dog to the front of the house. And like I said, this is the most fearful dog I had ever worked with, have ever seen. And I get the e-collar on the dog. And uh, I start searching for the levels. You know, I'm on a number one. I think back then I used the sport dog collar. It didn't have a ton of levels. Maybe like one through eight or something. I think so. And, uh, you know, I'm tapping. And I'm going through. And, and nothing. The dog's not giving me any. I mean, Nothing. You know, and I'm going up and I'm going up and I'm going up. And now I'm at the highest level and I'm thinking, oh my, I don't think this thing is working. There's nothing. And then all of a sudden I turn around 
and poor Bruno is in the front seat, like up on the dashboard, looking at me like, what do you want? You know, freaking out. I had the wrong remote in my hand. I had Bruno's remote and I'm like hitting him on the highest levels. And he's like literally on my dashboard freaking like, I'm right here. You know, I felt so bad, you know. So we got the right remote and we started working this dog and it was like magic. I mean, it was honestly like magic. Everything changed. I mean, this dog changed on the spot and people were blown away. But the thing is, this was nothing new. I had seen this over and over and over. You know, I hadn't seen a dog this, this far gone, but I knew that every dog we worked with the e-collars, uh, and back then I used to go to the e-collar right away. I didn't do much work before, you know. I, I do plenty of work up front now, but I used to go to it right away. But it was so beneficial for the fearful dogs. And here's the thing, and I could just guess. Here's my theory. When you take a dog that has no confidence, absolutely nothing, and you take a dog that's scared of everything. And again, when you allow that confusion to come into play, because there's always confusion when the dog first feels the e-collar. All dogs, they don't know what it is, right? There's confusion. And you give that dog an outlet to win. When there's a chance to win, when the dog always has the opportunity to win, and better its situation, it does wonders immediately. A lot of these dogs have never had that opportunity before. They stay in that mindset permanently, and they're never given the opportunity to get out. And I truly believe, again, this is just my take on it, my guess. My take is when you take a dog that has nothing, no confidence, very insecure, scared of everything, you provide them with that confusion, and then you give them a chance to clear it up on their own. You allow them to think that everything's in their hands. They have all the power. And when you allow them to win like that, it does wonders. It really does. And I don't know any other tool you can do that with. I, I really don't. And I think there's so many of us that disagree on so many things, but when it comes to the e-collar stuff with fearful dogs, that's one thing I think almost everyone agrees with. I really do. Because we all see it, guys. We all see it, you know? And I'm sure there's more that come into play with it, but it does wonders. So those three things right there, that's my take on it. Again, you don't have to agree with me. Um, I've had a little bit of success when it comes to training dogs and, and using the e-collar. And, and I've had that success in a way that make people, dog owners, everyday dog owners, very happy because they see the attitude on their dog. And that's everything to people, guys. It's, it's everything. If you fix the problems, but the dog always looks like it's sad and down in the dumps, people aren't happy. They're, they're just not. They might be happy at first if the behavior problems go away, but in the long run, that's never going to make someone happy. You know, so when I show up at someone's residence to do a follow up after a boarding train and the door opens and that dog sees me and he goes absolutely crazy, I see the look on people's faces. It means everything to them. They know that that dog had a good time when they stayed with me and nothing bad happened because dogs can't lie. You know, they're the most honest creatures on earth. They can't lie. All right. So again, fearful dogs, aggressive dogs, and active God correction. Act of God corrections. I hope that clears up a little bit. And again, guys, we, we're losing dogs left and right. We have to save this tool. And the only way we could do that is by showing the good what it's capable of. That's it. Peace.